Casey from Camelot, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. This is Sean from Camelot, and you are geeking out Gear Gods. Hey, this is Oliver from Camelot, and you are geeking out to Gear Gods. Today we are in Anaheim at the Grove, and uh, I've got my full kit here. Uh, I have a reference kit from Pearl. Um, pretty much using, I mean, everything's reference except the side snare drum, which is a firecracker snare. Um, the sizes are 10, 12, 16 inch uh, floor tom and uh, two 22 inch bass drums. So you can see the bass drums are not, they're actually the pedals set up for one side. I kind of started doing that a few years ago because I set the pedals quite close together. Um, it's just a little bit better for me, but uh, 14 inch by 5 inch snare drum, 10 inch firecracker. Uh, snare and the symbols are Zildjian, all Zildjian, uh, ranging from different sizes. As you can see, I like the egg customs um, and some new, these new little uh, China uh, splash trashes. And uh, the actual spiral stacker is a new thing, too, that I just uh, put on, which is a little, really cool little slinky looking effect when you hit it. And an old it's an old Earth Ride, actually. Uh, it's probably, uh, somebody told me it was made in the 70s, late 70s. I found it in a pawn shop a few years ago and fell in love with it, so. Running my in-ear -ear system. And also I'm using uh, Alien Ears, in-ears, which I've been with for quite some time. And these are a custom G16, uh, eight um, different, free, uh, drivers. different drivers, yeah, in each, in each ear, so. Um, pretty hefty stuff. It sounds amazing. And yeah, so big shout out to those guys. And Vic First Sticks, mm -hmm. signature series. All Evans drum heads. And I uh, actually own my own company, which I do the logo heads for. Um, it's called Drum Static. So I've been doing that for about. Uh, five years, so I do Heads for Corn, uh, a lot of pop bands like Rihanna, Madonna, uh, you know, uh, a lot of different different bands, but I do my own. We, we have these light-up heads, so it's kind of cool. Um, I do Kisses drum heads, which are all light, light up, you know, um, so it's kind of fun to do and fun to add on little things like that. Oh, what else? Uh, rock and Socks, you know, seat. The, the rack is actually a Falicon rack, which was um, this guy from Tampa, I believe his name was Tim Falcon. I can't remember if that was his first name or not, but he actually designed this rack with Steve Wackles, the drummer from Sabotage, and um, I ended up with it, and uh, it kind of kind of grew on me, and uh, I like it. It's great, you know. It's kind of it's a smaller footprint than using cymbal stands, so it works out quite good, and uh, easy to set up. I think <laughs> at least my drum tech says it's easier to set up. That's pretty much, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Loads of cymbals, we have spare cymbals too. Um, and uh, yeah, spare of everything, so. The seat thumper, I use the, the, the pearl throne thumper. Gets me a good little kick. And uh, cause I don't use a big, uh, big monitor I use just a small small size monitor so it's a little easier on sound and and uh, you know don't have to bug everybody about with the big low-end kick drum sound so I could feel everything and I got it running in my ears too so works out good uh, hello my name is Rich I am the guitar tech for Camelot and uh, this is my little world I guess I'll, I'll take you through what we have um, Thomas has ESP guitars. Thomas is the guitar player, obviously. He's got like the, the uh, LTD type Les Pauls. Well, I shouldn't use the word Les Paul. The classic shaped <laughs> classic solid LP body guitar. Style. He uses uh, EMG pickups. These are passive EMGs. You don't have to put batteries in them. Uh, and then he's got this custom, really cool looking guitar that they gave him. Basically, okay, Thomas's rig is really simple. 
he did, he has a sound and he, he uses the uh the ampeg vh 140c solid state old extinct amplifier made in late 80s early 90s that's his sound you know i mean that's pretty much it other than that we have a bad flashlight we have a digital you know the standard boss digital delay in line with the tuner and a noise suppressor the noise suppressor stays on the whole time i run the delays uh the only other effect is his weeping wah-wah uh, and uh, that's it. So his sound is really simplistic, really, you know, it's the sound that he gets, what he likes, and that's that. We've had the Kemper Profiler amp for a couple weeks. Today we turned it on for the first time, and we profiled his Ampeg amp, which was really cool. It was really fun. Uh, you basically, you mic the amp you're using. You take a... Uh, direct output out of the Kemper and uh, or basically you, you take it the microphone goes to the input of the Kemper and you just hit profile and it just makes weird noises and next thing you know you got a copy of your amp so we have that for a backup we may start using that but it's still new to us as far as Sean I don't know if you're interested oh we're using the PV cabinets Hi, I'm Oliver from Camelot. Uh, we're here in the, the US. I'm German, so excuse my uh, wrong English, my funny accent. Um, yeah, I have a very simple setup on this tour. Usually uh, I have different setups depending on where I play in Europe and in, in the US. I got my support from uh, Yamaha. Uh, on festivals, for example, I use laptops um, and you know, Brainspawn Forte, that's a certain program, like a host program for VST instruments. But um, a workstation is still for me the, the best option. It's, it's most convenient. The crew doesn't have to uh, fiddle around with unnecessary cables. And, you know, it's just like the easiest and most reliable way to, uh, for me to play. This is the Yamaha uh, MOX8. The uh, 8 means like I have the full range of, uh, of keys, 88 keys, um, weighted keys, which is important for me. I'm not, well, a keyboarder per se. I'm, I'm a piano player from, uh, I studied that on the university and stuff. So I'm, I'm used also to non-weighted keys, but uh, it's, it's better for me if I, if, if I just have the feeling like a real piano. Yeah, um, that's the MOX8. I also have the, um, the big one, the Motif XF8 which is super heavy. It's like twice the, the weight. And this one is, is like 15 kilograms. Um, and it's better for the back of, of my crew and for me at home. And yeah, I, I, I'm with Yamaha since my earliest days, um, always touring with them, always upgrading to the next model. So that's the hardware. Maybe um, something about the stand, which is custom made uh, for this tour pretty cool you have these controls here uh, so if if I press here I'm playing fast if I press here I'm playing slow no of course not uh, this is like I, th I don't think it's actually working um, you have different lights but I think it's off power now as you see I'm squeezed in between drum sets that's the story of my life um, but it's a really really nicely made stand remembers me a little bit of HR Giga, the, the alien guy from Switzerland. Um, yeah, maybe quickly about my patches. I usually, I need um, a good piano sound. I'm very, very uh, specific about that. And uh, the workstations here really provide it if I... that's um, I'm playing so 
jazz or, or whatever, you know. I'm also soloing during the show, so piano is super important. I have a string sound, that's my standard. You know. And so on. Um, solo sound, super loud, so I put it a little bit down. Um, what else? Some, some special sounds for Camelot, you know, uh, pads, uh, all edited. Um, I don't use the, the, the presets. We couldn't, we couldn't reproduce the, the sound of Camelot just by two hands. So, um, and also, uh, you know, in the studio I do a lot with orchestra on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand, a lot of, of grooves, synthesizers, um, sequence stuff, which is anyway not, you know, played. So that stuff is then coming from, from tracks, but not within this machine, you know, then we use a laptop. And, um, but all the like strings, uh, piano parts, I, I play myself. Like yesterday, the, the computer was actually stuck, so there was nothing, and then, um, well, it's only keyboard. Audience didn't notice anything. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically my thing. I love these machines. I'm hidden. I, I have always something in between my, uh, the, the audience and me, which is important for me. I'm, I'm not so the front guy person. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Sean from Camelot. Uh, I'm the bassist, and I'm here to give you a run through on some of my gear. Um, w one of my favorites here is, um, is my Warwick Infinity and uh, this is a pretty cool bass and I also use the streamer. I use both. Um, this one is actually, the Infinity is actually my backup bass right now um, and my streamer is my main bass. No real particular reason, they both sound great. Um, I just, uh, I'm endorsed by Warwick and they are, for me, the best bass company I've ever worked with and they just make impeccable instruments man it's the, the difference between a uh, a toy and a real instrument these things really sound good man but then well, some of the features I have right here is like on this one um, you can pull the knob up right here which makes it go passive if you're into like a passive jazz type sound like old school 70s type stuff or Jocko Posterius type tone you can do that you can uh, put it down and then you've got an active preamp on there also, you can pull the back one up on this particular one, and it splits this coil right here, and then you only have, instead of having like a dual humbucker type sound, you'll have like a single coil deal, like a, once again, like a jazz bass. Um, but it still remains active by pulling this back one up. Um, you've also got your, your split between the two on the bottom. And then you've also got your, uh, your mid-range <coughs> boost right here. And uh, you got your tone down here, your, your bass and your, and your treble, of course. Um, active on the preamp, and this one's a little bit different. I'm really in love with the uh, the, the uh, jazz type style pickups, man, because you just get such a great coverage in your tone. Um, it makes it real consistent across the whole spectrum of the neck here. Where um, you know, I guess it's just a style. I used to use a lot of PJ stuff, and and I always felt like when I used the PJ stuff that the higher strings. Uh, it never really seemed like it came through very well, especially on the mid-range type stuff. So with these right here, I get a real good consistent sound on them. Uh, I guess it's just old school, you know, jazz type setup. Um, what we have here is uh, on this, it's the same thing with the, you can pull it up and make the whole thing passive. And this, the bottom one right here divides the pickups front and back. It's actually got a notch in the middle. It's, uh, it's really nice stuff. These are all, it's all MEC electronics, by the way. And, um, they just they have a their own particular growl that is just amazing and uh, back here you've got your your bass and your treble boost on your preamp and then this one is your mid-range and of course this one on top like I said was the, the volume I, I believe I told you that um, one of the cool features about uh, Warwick 2 is their bridges now uh, this particular band tunes really low uh, we're a whole step flat on a lot of our songs and so what happens is is like because you're so low that the strings get loose and they flop and make a bunch of noise on the, on the frets and instead of raising up these little saddles right here like you have to do in a lot of bridges all you do is you just un this is a lock right here you unlock that and you can bring them up over here and you don't lose your intonation on the thing and um, it still and it leaves the, the strings consistent all the time it's, it's a really cool feature um, I love that feature about these and and because you know I play different styles of music I'm all the time having to go up and down with them because if I'm not getting a standard 440 tuning, and, um, it doesn't have to be so high. 
um, I can I can get it like right on the neck, which uh, is is really a nice feature. Um, up here, we've got I've got some custom inlays on this one. Usually I don't have any inlays, but they put this one on here, and it, I'm real happy with it. It's really really pretty. Um, I'm missing my cover, <laughs> but uh, another feature that this has is my hip shot, and the hip shot is just it's so nice, man, because. You know, how many times I was, you know, you're excited, you're in the moment, you're running out on stage and uh, you forgot to tune, you know, because we have songs that are in different tunings. And so it's like, oh no, I'm in the wrong tuning. Instead of running back to my tuner, I just hit that, boom, it drops my tuning down, I'm in the next song, I'm in the right key, I'm ready to go. It's all dialed in. So it's, it's a real nice feature on these and it goes for both ways. So you, you can pop it this way, now I'm in, you know, I'm in D, now I'm in drop C. It's that easy. So it's pretty cool. They're on, these, both my bases are, are neck through. Uh, I really like the neck through uh, options with Warwick. They have bolt on options too, but the neck through have a really good feel. I mean, uh, when you're playing them, it actually feels like a part of your body. And um, I, the whole shape of their bases too, with the, if you can tell, I don't know if you can see that, the curve of it really fits in my bass player belly over here. <laughs> I call it my stored musical knowledge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I must be a genius. <laughs> oh, then, then I'm a god. Oh. <laughs> well, there you go. So, uh, oh yeah, I have to. Um, my other bases, uh, some of them I have from Warwick, uh, have lights in the neck, which is really nice. Um, but this, this, these particular two don't have the lights in them. These are my uh, my older bases. Um, so I put some glow in the dark paint on them. So when the light man leaves me in the dark and I can't figure out where I'm at, I can actually see my neck. So it, it helps out quite a bit. Um, but that's about it. Um, what works, man? They sound great. I love them. Sean's rig. God, I wish I could whistle like that. Very simple. He's going direct. So he's got his uh, Nady uh, wireless system, standard Boss tuner. Uh, we have a little distortion pedal over there for one song. Other than that, it goes through a Sans amp, and we have a Behringer DI under here. So he's got he's got two feeds going out to the PA, and that's it. He's not using any speakers or anything. Uh, I think in Europe he uses Warwick amplifiers. I mean that's what he uses when I'm there. Hey, it's Herman here from Dragon Force. I'm geeking the hell out of myself and you guys on Gear Gods. Hi, this is Gian Zana from Dragon Force and you are geeking out to Gear Gods. Hi, this is Vadim from Dragon Force and you're geeking out to Gear Gods.